Welcome to the Help My Unbelief podcast, the number one Christian podcast designed for the unbeliever. Hey, Zach, how are you doing today? Hey, Larry, pull the microphone up to your mouth. Uh, Act correct. like you've been podcasting for 45 yeah. weeks now. <laughs> hey. Well, you're trying to catch me off guard. I got everything up here in the, in the way. We have our our okay. friend. Our hey, friend. Zach, how are you doing? No, we're we're already going. <laughs> our our I, new friend, our new friend Becca, is literally going back and watching all our old episodes whoa. now. And and I'm like, I'm like, hey, um, wait until you see how like innocent and new and how <laughs> how all this thing was back then. But you. You cannot call yourself a new podcaster now. You've literally been podcasting for, is this 46 or 45? This is 44. Is it? Mm-hmm. I can double check. But 44. I can double check, but here's my list. Yes, this is the 44th <laughs> visor that I've worn. Yes. No, um, None of us are new at none of us are new at podcasting anymore. None it's of Larry's forty fifth visor. <laughs> and you know what, dude? You know what I'm sick of for everybody that's watching this show right now. That's going back and telling me um, that I interrupt too much. That was literally okay, like listen. eight episodes ago. Yeah, listen, I'm getting better. First off, don't worry about it. Quit being so prejudiced. Like, go watch the next episodes. I'm working on it. You're commenting on 10 episodes ago. Yeah, that was 10 episodes wow. ago, Zach. Okay, okay, okay. Dial down the pride. I don't interrupt anymore. I just interrupted you. Dial down the pride. I know. Nobody talks crap about Larry interrupting people. <laughs> like, it's oh, okay. Oh, We're all here, Zach. We, we are here for God. you need a hug, God. buddy? Do you We're here for hug? God. I don't know. Zach, here do, you need a, do you need a hug? Nah, I'm not good with affection. That'd probably make me more uncomfortable. It's crazy, too. It was crazy, he too. Does, he literally does run from me when I try to hug him. But they did say, young guy, that interrupts a lot. And so I'm like, well, I know who that is, young guy. Yeah, it wasn't me. <laughs> this guy right here. Easy. Yeah. Easy one. Young guy. <laughs> Some you know, young guy, isn't that y- y- Chinese y- food? Y- y- oh, y'all are going to have to excuse me if I get a slight <laughs> bit of distraction. I have a floaty in my eye for some reason. What is that? What's a floaty in your eye? Floaty is a dot or or something that's on your cornea. I don't I don't know how to explain it, but it moves with your eyeball. Mm-hmm. And you, I've, you got to be found over my... like forty eight to grasp a floaty. Really? <laughs> okay. I was telling Zach. That's why <laughs> I'm I well over forty eight. But no, I mean, it's usually off to the far side, so that I, when I sweep my eyes, I don't see it. Yeah, it, you know, just a little bit of movement. But this one, for some reason, today is black, and it is right in the center. So when I move my eyes, it it moves, and I've I, I've ducked from it a few times. I'm trying not to do that. Well, that just sounds like an old person thing. Hold on, I message. Wait a minute. I'm, I'm messaging a guest. Okay. I'm messaging our guest, so sorry. I'm looking for Can the, you hold the fort down for a second? How do yeah, we get sure. that sound effect that goes do 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 oh, wow. <laughs> Turn up turn up that volume meter right next to the <laughs> The lights. moment's gone now. Oh, somebody said somebody said too that they're, they're like they're like, oh Mark discovered the sound effects. Yeah. It's gonna go crazy. Someone commented <laughs> right. that today. There you go. You just turn the volume up and hit them. That wasn't it. Yeah, that, that would be that, the wrong one. That's what happens whenever I message a, a guest and you guys got to hold the fort down for a minute. You drop the We're ball. holding the fort down. <laughs> Keep going at it. <laughs> uh, this is bad. <laughs> no, nah, but I mean, the floaty thing, it, I have had to duck it and I don't get it. I don't know where it came from. It wasn't there yesterday and it's there today. But, you know, dealing with it. Yeah. That stinks. I appreciate your help this week, man. You're welcome. Yeah, I thought that was really cool, like how you how you came up with like a plan to fill in that little gap and stuff like that. And I was like, ah, oh, that's kind of when, that's kind of when you like the the whole age thing. You just been being around and you just know how to fix everything and stuff. I'm like, I, I need don't to know get how there. to fix everything, but I got ideas on yeah. most of it. There, because, really cool. huh? 
I didn't okay. say a thing. Whoa, dude, he's hearing stuff now? Yeah. Yeah. Jesus, the, dude. The little floaty started are, talking. Yeah. Man. Yeah, it probably did. Dude. Do, 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 do. Probably did. <laughs> Since I no, still but, can't find that. <laughs> I don't know everything, but through the experiences that I went through with my grandfather, you know, um, he taught me how to improvise and overcome whatever obstacles there. And so it's just problem solving. Yeah. At its finest. I, I'm really good at uh, adapting and overcoming problems. Like, I've never had something that I started that I didn't finish, but I will kick and scream all the way there. I get frustrated easy. Like, I could oh. not be a mechanic. Well, I'm, let let yeah. me tell you, I had a 2004 um, Ford Escape, and the alternator went out on it. And they put the alternator oh, yes. back against the firewall at the back of yep. the engine. To and get that belt off? I literally to, I literally had to jack the thing up, yep. remove the drive, the axle, the front axle, jack part of the engine up to fit a new alternator. I was on my back kicking it in. My wife had to leave because the string of lovely adjectives and adverbs were coming out of my mouth. She said, I've never seen you that that angry this was uh, definitely, this was definitely before christ no <laughs> yes no before christ this was bc no <laughs> no. <laughs> no i still act like that 100 percent. yeah and no, frankly if I, anybody had stuck around it would be ad for them <laughs> the sad thing is i know exactly what you're talking about <laughs> right you you have to actually remove the top motor mount jack the motor up away from it yeah it's it's crazy yeah. on, on some of those things yeah the thing is uh I, when I was making my first podcast studio, um, I had this door. I had this door. <laughs> um, there's this door that was hanging there, and it, it was going to help me close it. It was going to help me um, close it to um, soundproof it, mm -hmm. soundproof the room. I, I made my garage into a podcast studio. Is sure. Essentially what I did. Did you put up the foam? Oh, yeah. I, dude, I did. Well, I put carpet on the walls. There you go. It looked like Jeepers Creepers lived oh, there, but it worked, dude. Hey, um, straight up, he's not a kid from the 70s, but he brought in the shag carpet for a reason, oh, right? So there awesome. was just little strips of it, too. It looked terrible, but you didn't need to, you don't need to see things in a podcast, do you? You really just needed to see like a little section of it. But anyway, um, I was trying to get this door sealed and it wouldn't did it. It, it, it wouldn't seal. And I would probably was trying it for 15 minutes and I ripped that sucker off the hinges and then just started like punching holes through it. I mean, and I, sh within a matter of five minutes, I had shredded that door and Angela had walked out and was just staring at me and she's like, feel better. And I was like, yeah, I do. I was like, I do feel better. And that's when I realized you you know they make those rage rooms. Have you heard of those? Yeah, like, yeah you, you brought that up last time. You can literally go into these rooms and pay to destroy like glass and stuff like that. And I, I'm like, I I think that since this is the second time you've met, mentioned I need a to rage go, room, dude. I, I need he, to go. I think he needs to go. I need an outlet. I need an outlet. I really do. I need an outlet for some of this like stress and stuff. I, I don't know how to do it. Like everybody's like, I'll go to the gym and let it out. And I go there and I'm like, I get stressed out more in the gym because it's just another thing that I have to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, actually. Yeah. If it feels like a burden, it's not. Yeah. Yeah. You got to find your thing. Do you have any hobbies, man? Disc golf, but that pisses me off too. <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> So do you <laughs> anything with that four letter word golf? It it angers people. Yeah, I, I'm I'm just. You saw my attitude on Monday, right? Well, I'm trying to think of I'm trying to think of like if like what you're trying to say, say your attitude well, was. My attitude on Monday. I want you to stop and think about it. I thought it was fine. I got up. Yeah, it was fine. But I got up that morning. I had absolutely no help. My help didn't show up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I had I have my biggest Mondays every other Monday, and that was it. Yeah. So, and Darcia was working. I had all of that to do myself, and I didn't stress out at all. I prayed before yeah. I left the house, Lord, you're going to have to help me through this day. Yeah, you look just as calm as ever, yeah. But the attacks more calm than me and he had more stuff than me to do <laughs> they i actually helped you yeah, you know? yeah let's say he stopped um, and helped I stopped me and climbed up the ladder looked at something fig figured out a problem for him gave him the answer and then walked off yep i mean you know well it's funny how that works when your brain is clear 
You yeah, know it I mean? is amazing. And it it's is. Ve- it's, it's, I, I can get to those points every once in a while. I wish I could live in that constant yep. daily, but I still get thrown around a little bit. And, you know, it's funny because the Bible talks about that, about uh, the double-minded man. Well, it goes back. And to- I think to one degree or another, the more the, the more we can focus and hold all our thoughts captive you- and surrender to God, the, the less that sway is. I completely yeah. agree with that. I completely. That, like in the men's group when I talked about the peace lane, mm-hmm. it's just like driving a car. If when you're going down the road, you know, you got to kind of keep your car in the middle of the of the lines, right? So you kind of have to steer. You can't just take your hands off the wheel. But it's subconscious. Yeah. Almost. You're not even thinking about it. Yeah. But if you get to that point where you're following after Christ in that manner that you're seeking after his peace, right? That is your lane. And when you start feeling it, you, you oh, okay, hold on. I need I need to adjust. And in the world of cars when you want to adjust you you use your steering wheel in the world of spiritual warfare when you need to turn back into the peace you ask god you know i've been thinking about this a lot lately too what you what you guys are talking about because i've been really thinking i was like okay i'm a business owner and i'm constantly thinking of ways how to grow my business grow this right grow this and i realized i was like okay i'm stressed i'm stressed bad. I'm always stressed. Right. And I always stay kind of wound up about it. And I say, okay, well, I I have a couple options, right? One of the options is that I could just go back to a normal nine to five and just drive a truck. What is that? Nine to five. (laughs) I've Uh, never worked one. (laughs) Well, that's what I'm saying. I could go back to a job to where I just get told what to do. I get a salary and I go, right? None of us three have that. We all live out there Uh on the razor's edge of independent. Well, that is true. Yeah. We all are business owners. We all, we all own our own business. And so I could do that. Right. And I would have to definitely find a way how to survive because there's no nine to five that could pay my bills. Now I don't know how I did it, but I'm sure we could do it. But anyway, so we could do, I could do that, and I'm sure my stress would reduce greatly, but then I wouldn't be happy because I live in that uncomfortable area. I love that, right? Or um, I could just continue just being this stressed out and probably chop my life expectancy down by about 20 years. I could do that, right? And just never figure it out. Or I could figure it out because I have to think, is it possible to continue to add stuff to my plate and be happy and stress-free? And I think the answer is yes. And here's here's what I think that a lot of people in positions like ours, I think we're downplaying something. A full night's sleep, diet, drinking enough water, getting all your vitamins and minerals, and exercise and taking care of yourself. I realize like I I don't I don't sleep. And everybody said, well, a su- most successful people don't. Well, this successful guy does want to sleep because, like, here's what sounds crazy. Because everybody says that, um, everybody says that they're like a different type of person requires a certain amount of sleep. And I can live on six, but I'll stay in this constant stressed out. But I notice when, I, like, every, I don't know, three months, I'll, I'll have a day where I'll sleep for 10 hours. Hey, you know, Steve Jobs didn't sleep hardly at all no that's what they say and um he didn't live very long hey when you burn your candle at both ends eventually you run out of wax right exactly that's what i'm saying so got to focus on sleep got to focus on all that that little stuff right and i noticed that whenever i'm well rested and i'm eating good and i'm down in my you know and my my goal or my my peak weight and stuff like that your fighting weight yeah i can i can chill And I can handle all this stress relatively easy, you know? And I think we take for granted all that Mm. little stuff, you know? We think that there's like this big grandiose thing that you have to do to get rid of your stress whenever in reality you're not focusing on those little things. Well, my job is exercise. Um, That it is. I don't take a lot of medicine. I don't take medicine. Uh, You still not taking? Occasionally I take an ibuprofen. Well, I take an ibuprofen. But I've knocked it down in half, and I take a baby aspirin because, you know, I'm supposed to. Everything, your else, doctor, everything else is vitamins. Didn't your doctor tell you to stop taking ibuprofen? Yeah, I went from four a day to one. Okay. Yeah. That's. 
I thought they told you to stop taking it all together. Well, we're having to do the transition. You don't just stop. But right. hey, that's what the doctor said. But what I said was I got prayed for out at El Reno. And, I, and then later I got prayed for here. And I realized I'm hampering God. Yeah. I'm wearing my knee braces still after being prayed for. That's not a sign of faith. That's a yeah. sign of not believing. And I talked to my wife, and I said, I think I'm going to do this. And I have made a stand on the promises of God and the, the uh, prayers that were prayed over me and the belief that I have. And I haven't worn those knee braces for three weeks now. Three weeks now. I wonder if the guy that Jesus told to pick up his mat and walk, I wonder if he knew he was healed before he got up and picked up his mat and walked, or he did that. Or you, that know, was you, need you, you, you need know, to watch Chosen. You need to watch Chosen. You know, in the Bible, there were places where Jesus couldn't heal people. Yeah. Because their faith, they had no faith. Yeah. And so, you know, I like what Larry's sharing here. I, I can remember a time where I had back pain so v- severe I couldn't even think I couldn't work. I couldn't even stand in a moment. I mean, I couldn't even exist. It was so bad. And I went, got an MRI and it looked like my, my lower spine looked at like a melted candle. That's how bad the, the disc oh, were blown out wow. the bottom disc. And he said, the guy told me it took the MRI. He said, I've never seen a damaged disc this bad in my career. And I've been doing this for like 20 something years. I've never seen this. I don't even know how you're upright. So I called another guy that was part of the family that I knew. And he told me, he said, you got to get in surgery. The next step for you is loss of bowel control. I mean, you're what? It, yeah, it doesn't get any worse than this. You got to go get spinal fusion surgery. And, you know, I, looked at a couple other things and I kept reading about everybody that gets spinal fusion sur- surgeries. And there's a lot of horror stories because you get it repaired. Then, then it's a cascade. Then it's the next, disc uh, goes out. the next disc keeps goes going. Out. Yeah. Yep. It keeps going because you, so I just, I, I cried out to God and I said, Lord, I'm too, I'm too early in my career. I, you know, I've got things that need to be done for myself, for you, my family, um, take this from me. And, and I just started looking and I found this decompression thing. So I started doing it. I went on pain management. God told me, yeah, I'm going to heal you. Don't allow yourself to be cut on, but it didn't happen overnight. It took months. Um, Oh, but it was a slow progress out. And even in that I became addicted to the non-narcotic or non-opiate pain medication they gave me. Oh, what was that? Tramadol? No, it was, um, bupropamine. It's what they put in Suboxone. Oh, One of the yeah. ingredients in Suboxone. Yep. Okay. They put it in what? Suboxone. That's which what is, they treat which heroin is, addicts with. Because has its it, own withdrawal? Oh, it's the worst. It's, it, I should have just stayed on opiates. It was uh, worse than that. But what I'm saying is God was with me through all of that. Yeah, I had to turn to some pain management because there was no other choice. It was either that or go get the surgery. But God told me don't get the surgery. Then he slowly healed me. And I, I can't, because they told me there's no way that this is coming back. You know, you can't. And during that time, I, you know, I'm putting a 35, 40 pound camera on my shoulder and going out and working. And, um, do I you just, still do that by the way, the, the big cameras that, oh yeah. that are heavy like that? Oh yeah. Yeah. The ENG cameras. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I'm just here to testify that if God told you that it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. It's going to happen. And that's what he told me to do. And because of, even in that moment, I had the faith he was going to heal me. My lack of faith was I need something else to help me while he's healing. I still didn't have 100% faith. I'm not, yeah. I'm not sure any of us do a mustard seed. That's why God said all he only needs a mustard seed. Right. And I paid the price for my lack of faith thinking, okay, God, if you're going to heal me, then you'll heal me from the pain and you'll help me get through this. You know, I went to something to help get me off the pain. And so I had to go through a six-month withdrawal period that was the worst experience of my life. But God at some point told me, okay, stop that. And I'm just saying, I'm on the other side of that, and and I have no symptoms, no symptoms from any of that. Wow. And, it is uh, amazing. It, it's That's it's crazy. an absolute I mean, miracle. Because I, I had the fusion. Right. And I, I, have, I don't have a horror story. Right. It is actually... 
I'm glad it worked for you. It, Thank it's God. actually coming up on three years since my injury and two and a half years since my surgery. Yeah. And I don't have those horror stories. Yeah, sometimes I'm a little uncomfortable, but yeah, I surgery. also had a I also had a, a disc that was uh, ruptured three above the fusion. Wow. So you know I had so that as well, that. and they cleaned that well, up. Yeah. Here's the thing you say about the faith thing. You're supposed to have faith, but and not none of us do. It's just like if you saw a video, like I saw a video of a woman that was in church in a wheelchair and she st stood up and her legs were shaking. And there's a lot of testimony saying it's real, but your first reaction is to not believe that. Your first reaction, no matter what, is to, oh, it's, she's going to fall. Is to not she's going to fall. Yeah. Or, or to say that it's fake. Someone faked it, it's fake, or anything else like that. It's always your first reaction. It's because the world wants you to believe that miracles aren't possible. If it was believable, it wouldn't be a miracle. I'm, yeah. I'm every breath I take. Yeah. Every breath I take is a gift from God. That's what's crazy is we believe in a God. We believe in a God that does things, does the impossible, that does things like that. There's literally, isn't there more than one person walking around in our church oh, numerous, that used yes. to have Parkinson's or cancer. that doesn't anymore? Yeah. Parkinson's, Parkinson's doesn't get cancer. healed. Yeah. Like, it's just one of those things. And, and you can go around saying it's a coincidence all you want. And okay, okay. But like, what if it wasn't? But, but when you take faith, look at the woman who reached out and touched just the hem of Jesus' garment. Okay, it wasn't the garment that healed that lady. It was her faith that healed. And Jesus turns around instantly and knew that the power flew out of him. And he's like, who touched me? Right? But her faith was strong. Right? The centurion that said, hey, you can heal my, my slave, my servant if you from here. You don't even yeah. have to come to my house because I know what authority is. Right. That's the strength of faith. But there were several times in the Bible where Jesus said, did something, and he said, okay, go and do. Mm -hmm. Go and do. Like Naaman, mm -hmm. the go leper, walk, he had to dip seven times mm -hmm. in, in, in the Jordan River. Mm -hmm. He complained about it the whole time, but the servant girl said, he, what do you got to lose? <laughs> At this point, what do you got to lose? Well, if he told you you had to pay this, and if he told you that you had to, you know, do all this grandiose stuff, you would do it without a heartbeat. But because he says to dip it in the Jordan River seven times, you're fighting it. Do what the man said to do. Say, right. Tell that. What, what's that? Jordan River? No, the whole story that you just articulated. What is that? It's a story of Naaman. Tell Naaman. the story. Okay, the story of Naaman is he was a ruler, yeah. I believe, from a different area. Okay, and his slave girl was a Hebrew or Israelite. Hebrew or Israelite. Let's just go Israelite. Uh, was an Israelite that knew of Elijah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and she's he had leprosy. All right, and he, she, you know, he treated her well and everything. So she told him about well, there is a prophet called Elijah that can heal that. And it's he was God like, oh, it, there's yeah. no way, man. You know, there's no way. So he loads up. Now, back then, when they, when you loaded up to go visit somebody, you took buku riches. Mm -hmm. You took all of the, uh, you know, all of this stuff to, to uh, I guess, help. I don't know why they do that. Even Sheba did. Queen of Sheba did that. For with gifts Solomon. or what? Yeah, yeah to they soften take the hello. And, yeah, <laughs> take gifts and all kinds of stuff. It's like, just read about it. But with with uh, Elijah, he this guy came in and he 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 thought that he would, you know, make this grandiose entrance and and he already had it in his mind that Elijah was going to step out on the porch and wave his hands and agabracadabra and he would be healed. Healed of what, by the way? Leprosy. Oh, you said. Oh, you already said that. Sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. So <laughs> Elijah goes, you know, hmm. Go dip in the Jordan seven times, and then turns around and goes back in. He didn't. He didn't give him any uh, recognition of who he was. He didn't give him any explanation. He gave him that small thing, and so Naaman complained. He wouldn't do it. He didn't. No, do it. man, he was too proud for that. Are you kidding me? There's plenty of places I could have taken, you know, I could have cleaned uh, back in my own land that the water was cleaner. Yeah. He, than he this. even this is the Jordan. How it's nasty. He even complained, basically yeah. said, why are you sending me down the creek? Yeah. You know, you're, this old, you're, 
dump. Your Oklahoma red dirt right, creek here, exactly. you know. I could go bathe in the ocean. Yeah. I'm going to share something with you guys, and you can judge me all you want. I don't care. But that story you just told, there's a reason why I asked you to tell it. Because it's something that I've been dealing with that I've told you guys about for a long time. I'm not going to go into details, but there's something that I want to be delivered from. Like, bad. Um, it's been something I've, I've dealt with my entire life since I was a kid. And every time I pray to God, I, I pray to him, I beg to be delivered from it. I throw Darcy in his face. I throw Pastor Martha, Martha in his face and everything else. I try to manipulate God into delivering me my way. You're right. right. Um, and unfortunately, God is too smart for that. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> and God's been telling me to do something, Right. And he's been telling me to knock doors for like literally six months. I've told you guys about it. Yeah. And I have refused not to. Now almost every prayer that I pray, I, I say, God, tell me my next steps I got to do. to do. I instantly knock doors. And it's just something, it's something so simple. And I'm like, I'm a business owner. I do all this stuff. I am all busy. I don't have time to knock doors. I'm doing this and this and this. And that's all literally to the point that almost every, the only thing I hear from God is like, we're not going anywhere until you knock doors. Wow. Like, seriously. So, so you're stuck because you won't obey. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. You just said that in a judgy voice, and that's fine. No, no I, I get I've, that. You're identifying with Naaman. I get that. But I'm identifying with that because God's God, or that, um, that prophet, Elijah, told that guy to go dip in yeah. the river, and it was something so simple, but he was too good. Yeah. And maybe I'm not ready for it because I'm too proud to go do that. Well, it's a step that God's got to bring me to. We don't know why, but pride we, oh. is as much a leprosy as unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. Do you understand that? He's got to get me to that point where I'll do anything. Let me, let me, this verse was shown to me this morning. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's marked, but I just, Pastor Didi was preaching in the one section and here I found this and I'm like, I can't believe that showed up. It is. Second Chronicles seven fourteen. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and will heal their land. And when we read that, we think heal their land. Well, brother, that's your land. Right there. Yep. Your heart, yep. your soul, your body, that's your land. Yep. And it says to humble yourself. And humble and pride can't be on the same page. Nope. You know, being right. proud of God, that's one thing. Being prideful is another. They can. Humble and pr proud can be in the same place. Because I'm a humble guy. I'm just still got a tremendous amount of pride. I probably have more pr pr pride than anybody in this room by far, I would imagine. And you hold like, on to it. We're all older. We already know. That's what I'm saying. Like, that's why I'm not afraid to like admit where I'm at. It bothers me sometimes because I do have pride and I, I absolutely want to be better than all of you because well, I have pride. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I am literally seeing the growth in you over the last 44 weeks that we've been sitting here yeah. and having conversations and being part of each other's lives. And I've watched it grow from, I almost can't tolerate this. <laughs> to I'm praying for him and he will grow. Yeah. Or I'll kill him. One of the yeah. other. Now, I mean, listen. God's I, put me in a lot of fire. At, at where your age, I was just as prideful. Yeah. I was just as prideful. And even worse, because I, at that time, was in sales. I was very good at my job. I hit promotion after promotion. I got put in a dream position i had i had 250 below me and i was raking in the, the bucks but i was i was the cause of all that yeah so i was so what i was i was i was god already destroyed you know you know what it came all the way down to i was in san Antonio, and i'll tell you 
if my cousin, I made a phone call to my cousin. If my cousin wouldn't have drove down there and picked me up to bring me back, I would have had to walk. That's what happened. Everything was stripped. Everything. God, God already was knocked me stripped. down once, man. Yeah, let me share this. Same exact story, same age. I was flying all over to all over the United States doing this syndicated television show. Thought I was the bomb. Thought I was the bomb. I'd I'd play on the radio before I get on the airplane. Uh I'm a cowboy by uh Kid Rock. No. Um on a steel horse I ride. Oh uh, on yeah. It, dead or alive. Yeah. That was my theme song. I thought it was, you know what? Yeah. And you know where I ended up? Pitching tires out of the back of a semi for labor ready. Unemployable. I, I was the second youngest chief of police in the state of Oklahoma. Yeah. And I would literally walk around and people would be like, um, how'd you get there? And I'd be like, I worked hard. And then I'd leave and I'd be like, you just lied to that guy. God brought you here. You did nothing. You did nothing. Literally. You, you didn't study this. You, you got good at this because God allowed you to be good at this. You didn't pick, you've never picked up a law book. You've never studied any of this. You became a good detective and an interviewer because you're naturally gifted by God by it. Mm. And you prayed every time you walked into an interview room. And then, but when you have 30 year detectives coming in saying like, Hey man, can you interview this guy for me? Walking in, getting a confession in five minutes, walk out, and they're boosting you up. It's hard not to say that was me. How but quickly, it was oh, how quickly we forget who brought us. To I remember. Yeah. I remember one time a rookie started. Everybody asked me, and I give him some vague response about where I got good at interviewing and stuff like that. And I remember some rookie pressed me one day about it. It was crazy, man. He was like. How'd you, um, how'd you get a confession out of that guy? Man, I've just been doing it a while. Just, you know, just got good at it. He'd be like, but how? I'd be like, man, so I just, I go in and I just uh, lighten the mood and uh, got the mood down. And then next thing you know what he's talking and he goes, but what do you mean lighten the mood? Like, how? And I would just kept getting vague and he kept pressing me to the point where it was obvious I had no clue <laughs> how you how I was doing it. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. But I was. I was. It's all God wanted me to do was give him the credit. And right. I refused and he took it all away from me, man. That's yeah. right. And it, it says in the Bible, God opposes the proud. He sure yes, does. He does. Why? He sure it's does. not because he's got some uh um inferiority complex because you're his kid and he it's, doesn't want you to be an a-hole man yeah he must oppose the proud yeah because he is god he is the apex yeah he must oppose the proud it's not good for us to be prideful. you know how many times i've told my kids i've said i don't care if you like me i have a job to do I brought you into this world, and I got to make sure you don't turn out to be a piece of crap. So if that means you not liking me, I don't care. I've told him that. Right. I, I tell him that once a year, probably. Right. Be like, where I start to get that vibe where they're like, Dad's not letting me do what I want to do, and that's man, he doesn't let me talk to him, you know? And I say, hey, I don't care if you don't like me. You can hate me, but I got a job to do. You can never, once you get out of this house, you can never talk to me again. I don't care. I got a job to do. I brought you in this world, and I owe it to you to make sure you don't turn in to an insufferable piece of crap. And that's God. That's what God does to us, you know? And it sucks, dude. It sucks, and we yell at him. We get mad at him and everything else. And then, you know, he's a good dad, man. God's a good dad. God doesn't yell at us. No. God, God sits patiently and waits. I don't think God wants to punish us either. He doesn't want to punish us. He, he literally gave his own son so that he wouldn't have to punish any of us. Yeah. But he also said, you have to do this. He also, he also said simple. that he will instruct his children. And mm -hmm. somewhere, I don't know what the verse is, it says you need yeah. to get comfortable with the instruction. Yes. Because it I means you're loved. Read you're it a couple of weeks ago. You will be. I don't want to get to that where he, he does what he did to me again when I was chief of police. I don't want to get to that again. That was the worst, I was the worst time of my life. Well, man. That's probably one of the reasons that I won't go back into sales. It's because God gave me an ability to do that from the get-go. I mean, even as a 
Cub Scout, I was good at doing, you know, candy sales and whatever. God gave me that ability. Why won't I use it now? Because I can be. You, you think you could get arrogant again? Yeah, I, I'm terrified of being yeah. prideful again. God, terrified. God, God uses I am, that ability every day. I am church. not walking around that mountain again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. All right, well, we got to get to our guest. Sorry, guys, we're at 36, and she's been waiting. So um, right, go. we have um, something called a death wish, death witch coming on today. I don't know her name. Like normal, um, our normal guest backed out on us. We had a former Satanist and everything else, and so God decided to take it this direction today. Um, so we have a um, death witch. Um, I keep wanting to say death wish because that's what the world says, but... You guys know how it goes. We're back in the weeds. Yeah. Let's get it. All right, Lord. Here we go. Hello. Can you hear us? Yes, Charlie. I'm just going to turn up the volume a little bit. I can hear you, but fairly. Okay. Hold on a second. Yes. Yeah, you're just pretty quiet for some reason, and I've got you on loudspeaker. You've got me on. Um, you've got me on. Um, can you? Well, I guess we can't turn up our volume any any louder, huh? No, we can't. Because oh, got it. That was working. Okay. Um, so this is yes, audio. Sadly. I see you got your video on. You won't be able to see us, I don't think. We don't have our video. Not a problem. Would you like me to turn my camera off? No, you can keep it on. We had another guy do it. So I don't think okay, anybody no I don't think anybody will be able to see nobody here will be able to see you anyway. I, I, I had it on there, but um okay. So what's your name? My name is Victoria. Victoria, that's right. Okay. Uh, and you are a death witch, correct? Correct. Okay, cool. That's what I thought. I wanted to make sure I introduced you and I wanted to um, introduce you properly. So let me explain how this show goes a little bit and then I'm going to go around the room and introduce you to everybody, okay? Fabulous, thank you. Okay, this is the Help My Unbelief podcast. Um, we are not a debate podcast. Um, we, um, we, we all in this room or we're in um, of like mind that um, we um, aim to change the way um, Christians behave around people that don't believe the same thing that we do. Not saying that we always have to agree, but we can at least sit down and have a beautiful conversation with people, and maybe we can learn something from each other, if that makes sense. So we d we're not here to, de to debate. We simply just want to get your story from you. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's lovely. Okay. And, um, and, uh, with that being said, um, and so at the end of the show, at the end of the show, what we do, um, is we're just going to have a, basically a free conversation for the next 45 minutes or so. You got 45 minutes? Yes, absolutely. Okay, great. Um, and so we'll have 45 minutes or so to talk. And then at the end of that 45 minutes or so, we'll, we'll just free talk. We'll talk about whatever we want to. If we want to talk about snow cones and and uh, snowmen, then that's what we'll talk about. But at the end of the show, what we'll do is all of us in this room will go around and say something individually to you in closing. And then since you're our guest, you will get the final say. <laughs> that sounds lovely. Sound good? Okay. Um, I'm going to introduce yeah. you first to my executive producer, Mark. He's in studio today. Hello. How are you? Hello, Mark. I'm good. Thank you. How are you? Good. Nice to meet you. Um, my lovely nice wife. My lovely wife is sick today, so she's not here today. So um, we we'll, we'll be missing her. It's her first week she hasn't been here in forty. This oh, is episode forty four, and yeah, first week she hasn't been here. Well, I hope she gets better soon, and I wish her a very very speedy recovery. Thank you. And then I got my wonderful co host Larry here. How are you doing, Victoria? Hello, I'm very good, thank you. How are you? Pretty good. And then good. my name's Zach. I'm the one that um, you see in the TikTok videos on the account that we talk to, uh, talk from and stuff. I've seen some. I've seen some of your videos, and I found they were quite interesting. I must admit. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, and so, first of all, I want to ask. I'm he I'm hearing like a mixture of two accents from you. Is that true? <laughs> yes, that is correct. I'm um, hearing some South African. Uh, Am I wrong? Yes, you are very wrong. <laughs> am I? Okay. Okay. Tell me then. Yes. Where, where, where am I? What am I hearing? 
So I was born in Poland um, in a city called Krakow. And after that, up until I was about eight years old, I lived in the mountains close to Zakopane in the highlands of Poland. Um, and after that, I moved briefly to UK for about a year and a half to two years. Then I moved to Germany, where I think officially Max and have developed, so a mixture of Polish and German. And then after living for about seven years in Germany, um, on like after my teens, I decided I wanted to come back to UK because that's where I felt most at home. Oh, wonderful. Can you guys hear her okay? It's a little electronic but v- victoria is there any way i could get you to take us off speakerphone and maybe just hold the phone it, you, we usually get a little better audio that way no problem at all no problem in that case i'll turn my camera i'll turn this this off and how is this sounding that's oh, much that's better twice, yeah 12 times better yeah for Fabulous. some reason it just does not work well with the speakerphone so it, it works way better. We could hear way better with it on. So, okay, thank you. So, okay, so you're a de- you're a death witch. I, I keep wanting to say death wish because it, I don't know. I guess the way the world. Is. What 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 is that? You you described it to me in a message a long time ago, but I don't remember what that was. So, what what is a death witch again? So many people described it in many different ways, but I think because there isn't much information about being a death witch on the internet it's hard to find out information about what exactly a deaf witch is um but in summary it's essentially someone who practices witchcraft that has a very strong respect to the afterlife to those who have passed to um the deceased to uh, and having a very strong connection to death whether this is um, quite a literal sense of somebody passing away and helping them cross over to the other side or it could also be a transformative aspect um, in quite a spiritual sense, um, because we actually go through, let's say, death in so many spiritual ways. Like we go through something new, we turn into a completely new person. We almost get these awakenings or, as some people would say, I guess, either signs of God or signs of the, the universe. We do just transform and you develop a new and it feels very much like you become somebody completely new, somebody completely different in that sense it's almost like your soul evolves so there, there's some, yeah, some there's some sort of um concept of like that in christianity right baptism is one dying oh, to the flesh dying to yourself right yeah, yeah. being raised up into the mercy and blood of jesus christ and redemption yeah and i justification. get yeah i was gonna say victoria i guess uh, christianity does have a concept kind of like that of what you're what you're describing there Different. In all honesty. Like oh, sorry. Go ahead. I no. think in all honesty, it's all connected. I think all religions, every belief actually will um, stick to almost the same thing. Uh, and I believe that every religion has so much truth to it. And there's so many signs and messages that you get. But I do think to some extent, humanity or people in a so-called higher power can misconstrue this as well and actually sometimes twist the belief of what actually should be true. Um, but I do definitely think there are these these act, oh, sorry, aspects are everywhere in every religion and every belief that you will have. And my personal opinion to this is that everybody argues about, in so many ways, about what, what is the right path? What is the right thing? However, I think some, I think not many people are actually open to the fact about arguing or thinking of plans of how we can change those things, how we can make the world essentially better without having these arguments. Yeah, the reason the reason why I take it so seriously, the reason why I take that particular question so seriously, that which one is the right one, is because. The whole reason there, there's one sentence in the Bible to where mm-hmm. um, Jesus claims to be the only way to heaven. And that's why me for me personally, I have to take that very seriously. That either has to be true or it's not true. Right. I'm like, well, he either said that and he meant it and it's true or he was a lunatic and it and it wasn't true. That's mm-hmm. the only two options, you know, and I'm like, man. Absolutely. So if it is true and he claims to be the only way into heaven, I really need to do my due due diligence to check that out because the uh, the other alternate 
alternative, it doesn't sound too fun. Does that make sense? It absolutely makes sense. And I completely, I completely respect your belief and your path on this. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Cause a part of me still, mm -hmm. a part of me, cause we're talking about death. A part of me mm -hmm. still fears death. Do you? No. Not a, is Not it because sure. of what you do, what you do? No, it's, um, I mean, yes, that as well. Um, but I personally have been in a bit of a situation where um, I could have, I was actually very close to um, losing my life. And in actual fact, it was very peaceful. It was never, it can be scary, but it's never as tragic as people blame for it to be. Or in my opinion, it's not something you should definitely fear. And I think the most important thing that you can do in life is, be the best person that you can be. You are brought on this life to learn lessons, to learn every single emotion and to do your best to have your morals in the right place Yeah, and to be a good person. My honest opinion is that there is going to be a horrible person in every religion, every belief, including in witchcraft, including in Christianity. Um, I've met quite a lot of people who have been quite let's say it this way, quite horrible people. I would say, I would say it that way, but they, their perception on this was, I can almost do anything. If I pray, God will forgive me. But this is not something that I personally would agree to because I feel like everything and every choice that you make in your life has a consequence, which means if you just pray to ask for forgiveness, is not really, really going to get you anywhere unless you really learn something from this and do better. Yeah. Well, I mean, it does, it does say that I don't know if this has anything to do, but the, in our belief system, it does say something like, um, about praying and believing, but even demons believe, but you actually have mm -hmm. to like do something right. Or like faith, faith without actions is dead faith and stuff like that. So yeah, I think you're onto something there. Um, but like, so most witches do, they, they they don't vibe with Christians at all. And me and you, since we've talked a few times, and there's obviously no bad blood between me and you. But what's mm -hmm. your what's your view on Christianity? Because obviously, I've I've been interviewing witches and stuff for a while, and there's there's a few witches that obviously have no that I have, there's a few witches that I can tell you I love them. They're they're my friends, you know. Um, but what's your beautiful. personal view on Christianity, Christians, and the state of Christianity and stuff? What's your personal view on it? Christianity in itself, I personally don't think is bad. I think it had very good things set in place. Um, however, like I said, I believe that a lot of people have misconstrued um, a lot of things of, and have made it a base that you have to you have to do this or you need to really be afraid, um, which I personally don't agree with. Um, I personally would say I, I used to be Christian myself. Uh, my family was, um, my family was Catholic, but not very strictly Catholic. I've been, I've been surrounded by a lot of um, like strict Catholic in a way, some, in some form of ways, people just, strict Catholic people, but it's never resonated with me because since I was a child, I would always escape into nature. And whenever I used to pray, I felt like my prayers were answered by my ancestors and those who have passed away. These were the spirits that I felt were truly by my side. So in that case, I can only say this is what I've truly connected to. So, and you um, said you felt that way since you was a, uh, like a little kid, like how old do you think when that started? Um, very young, since I can remember, because I used to see spirits a lot. Um, my parents used to say to me that I was always talking to the spirits that were in a house. Um, my connection to these things, ever since I can remember, I was always just running into nature, always wanting to, if I could be outside, I always wanted to just run as far away into the, into the forest as I could. Yeah. And I would always sit down, look at the flowers, just connect to the trees essentially because that's where I found 
the most energy and the most peace. What's the deal with that? I've talked to a lot of um, witches that they've always started that way in nature and with like animals and nature itself. Like, what what is that? I, I think that's a very vague question that I'm at, asking there, but I I guess there's a correlation to it. And I just I guess I I don't understand um, what nature has to do to do with it. Can you help me understand that? I mean, if you could think about, if you were to think about it this way, an animal is going to be in its pure form. It's not going to stab you in the back. What you see is what you get, essentially. And as for trees, you could describe it as that trees have soul. Trees have a soul. And it's a very difficult thing to explain to maybe, let's say, somebody who um, either would be confused about this aspect or maybe wouldn't believe in this fully. But in that sort of belief, life is everywhere. It's not just within people. It's having that mutual respect, just the whole balance between life. And even if you think about it this way, nature in itself is not destructive towards the earth, but people are. So in that sense, I do believe that nature is pure within its bad and within its good is just a form of balance. And I believe that humanity, including a lot of beliefs, are just disrupting that balance. I, yeah, I guess I guess you're right. I, I, um, I'm really thinking about what you said at the beginning of that statement about like animals and trees, like you get what you get out of them. Even if you were in the forest and you saw a bear, you know what to expect out of it. It's cons- its actions are going to be consistent, you know. Absolutely. Um, there's consistency in nature. I understand. I understand that completely, and that that is there. There is a little comforting element to that because with humans, even if it's your own mother, a lot of mm-hmm. times we don't know what we're going to get. Humans are like Absolutely. a box of chocolate. You never know what you're going to get. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, even Absolutely. if it's your own you mom, if you <laughs> if it's your mom, your husband, your anybody, you don't know what you're going to get because Absolutely. they have they they can make a decision any second that they're alive. Yeah. Absolutely. And I believe nature has the truest form and don't get me wrong, nature can be cruel. Absolutely cruel. But it's um, consistent. But it's consistent. And the biggest mistrust that I've ever had was from people because there is no, truly no actual animal out there that is going to smile you, smile at you in the face or, you know, pretend to be your friend and then stab you in the back. You're not going to get that from nature. Yeah. In my honest if you, opinion. if you cross a bear that has cubs in the forest, mm-hmm. it's probably going to eat you. A cheetah, will, oh, yeah, a cheetah will tear you apart because it's a predator. Yeah. A, um, a, a squirrel's going to run from you. A bunny rabbit is not so dangerous. Yeah. It's, it's, it's easy to judge. Yeah, it's very consistent. I get what, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying because, um, I mean, I guess we would look at it that way with, I think heaven's going to be like that someday. When, whenever you remove the sin from people that the beauty of the beauty of just being able to enjoy each other without looking at you like are you lying to me mm. or what's your motive behind this there are no motives it's just pure we all get to just live with each other with well it'll be consistent like she's saying like it'll be in a place to where we can just enjoy each other's company and not have to worry about anything else well i do think in the movies when they represent a an animal's life like let's just go with Lion King. They give them so much human characteristics that you seem to see evil in certain animals and Yeah. Evil is human. There's nothing evil about a lion eating a person. It literally no. is just doing it's lion just, things. It's yep, just doing, doing what it's what it's supposed to, it's right? A predator, it's in it. It's, pro- it's, pro- it's protecting I've seen a video one. I've seen a video once where um, there was a man in the cage that has been actually um, planning to, um, well, he was just with the lion, but the lion has 
attempted to attack the human, the human and the um, um, lioness. I'm not sure what you call a female lion, but anyway, the lioness was trying to stop the lion from it's attacking lioness. the human. Yeah, I've seen a that. Lioness. <laughs> and there were, and I looked into the comment section because my first approach was, first of all, how would they expect lions to behave if they're keeping them trapped in a cage, even if they're feeding them? They don't belong in a zoo or in a cage. They belong in the wild. And even if they're suppressed of hunting or anything like that, they're, these instincts will naturally come out. The second part is lions generally will not attack a human that feeds them. They will attack a human if the human has done something towards that. And the lion specifically only went for that one male, not the other one. So even in that case, it's not that it's an unpredictability from an animal. It's the fact that an animal will react in its truest form, depending on what somebody did towards them. The first wrong point and wrong part is keeping them trapped, like in a cage. I personally don't like zoos. I personally don't like any of this. I feel like if an animal is able to live out in a wild, then absolutely let it be out in the wild. Yeah, zoos are kind of strange for me too. Um, I have a question that keeps popping in my head. Do you yeah. do you connect with any human being? Is there that one person that you connect with as well as you connect with nature? Yes, I do. Um, I connect with my with my fiance to that level. Is that the first person you've ever connected with like that? First, truly, yes. Yeah. First, truly, yes. Is your course. is your fiance of the same belief system as you? Um, he was. Um, so to a very similar belief similar belief system. Mm. Um, he has always been quite a skeptic. Um, very much a skeptic, but he was fairly open minded as well. Right. And um, there were a lot of times where I would feel something intuitively or I could say it the way that I've been hearing a message as a warning from spirit and I would say to him please don't do this because otherwise something is going to happen and the times he would listen to me was absolutely fabulous because it went as I said if he didn't listen to me he would have the consequences and it would go exactly the way I would say it would go um the other things were things like reading his palms, um, just feeling the energy from his eyes and his soul. Um, I truly believe that when I first saw him, I felt genuinely a connection. I had a lot of mistrust due to what um, people have done and due to my general mistrust towards, towards humans in general mm. and certain life experiences as well that have definitely made me tread a little bit more on eggshells. But I still felt like when I looked into his eyes that he was a truly good person and a person worthy of connecting with. Yeah. Um, despite certain experiences. And and I have. And it's almost like when I saw him first and we spoke first, it's almost like I recognized him um, from somewhere before. But I couldn't tell where exactly it was from. It's like I just knew. Do you believe in evil spirits? Um Yes, I do. I do strongly believe in evil spirits. There have been some issues I've been personally having. Um and this only took a very strong ritual for me to be able to get rid of it. What do you where do um, you think they come from? Where do you think evil spirits come from? Hmm. It's a good question. A very, very good question. I'm not really sure how to answer that. Yeah. I do think there is always good and there is always evil, but I think the majority of the things are in between. You're not going to get a human who's purely good and you're not necessarily quickly going to get a human who's just purely bad. Some people are born bad. I believe that. I believe that. But I think it also depends very strongly on how the world shapes us as well. And you think you think I certain people certain are you think certain people are um, born with more um, proclivity to being evil? Did I use that word right, Mark? Let's go, dude. Yes. I'm getting smart. I believe so. 
<laughs> yes, I believe so. I well, believe there is definitely. I, I also believe there is more bad than good in the world. I believe there is more bad people than good people. It makes you. It Where makes you it? wonder. It makes you wonder, like when you get a Jeffrey Dahmer and stuff like that. If you wonder if he was born with that innate, like psychopath ability in his brain. Yeah. It yeah. makes you wonder. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I asked that question because um, I, I think about that because you say you have some things going on right now um, with evil spirits, mm-hmm. and I just wonder where where you think those come from, and then what do you do? What do you do to get rid of them, and where do you think that power comes from to get rid of them? Oh, to be honest with you, I would have to tell you quite a bit about the situation that has been. Speci- like specifically bad and uh, it may take quite a while but I feel like I would like to tell you just so you can get a full context from this whole thing okay go ahead so um, there were actually two entities in the previous flat that I lived in we have called them the Ocean Street entities and um, these entities have been there for quite some time we had um, neighbors downstairs and um, these both women have for once said that the flat upstairs that we lived in has always had some paranormal activity in this or um, every single couple that has lived in that flat. flat. I think you call it apartment in the United States, don't you? Yes. Yeah, apartment. I'll just convert to apartment instead of saying flat like you say in the UK. <laughs> so <laughs> you, could talk, you could talk however you want and we'll figure it out. It's taken me a little longer to process yeah, I think it, I might but... just confuse some other people wondering what I'm, <laughs> what I'm on about, what I'm talking about with flat. <laughs> yeah. Um, and they have stated that every single couple that has lived in this apartment has ended up becoming domestically abusive. Um, it would be consistently negative energy from over this place. Um, one woman has moved on and the man has been left in the apartment and he ended up fleeing from the apartment without paying for anything or, or anything like that. It, it was just really, really messy. And uh, when I moved in that first, that was initially with my uh, ex-partner, who I can say openly, who was also very horrible um he was also um practicing witchcraft but the very negative stuff that um i would not i don't have any tolerance for and never had and i've had the biggest incidents with him in this in this apartment and i generally believe that this energy has somewhat stagnated and it's just remained there and it's also been there from um from the previous people that have lived there so the conclusion that I came to was that there were two spirits in um, in this apartment that were feeding off any negativity that was there, and they were not. It was not possible to um, get rid of them. Not possible at all. And for me, it started up with just feeling um, very often very dizzy. There was definitely a lot more paranormal activity going on. Um, at one point, my neighbors asked me if there's more potentially more paranormal activity due to the fact that I practice witchcraft. But I said to them, it's not the case at all because I know how to um, protect everything that I do. Um, whenever I do anything, I make sure I cleanse the space before and after. And um, and it's definitely not something where in, in my craft and in my practice, I would invite something very negative into my own space. So I saw that um, I saw you doing that. You you invite negative spirits into your space, don't you? Um it's the I invite the entities that I work with and my own energy. If I was to invite a negative entity, it would still not be in the house. It would purely be um outside and for a certain benefit and for a specific time, if that makes any sense. Okay. So I don't invite a negative or um, a hateful spirit into my house because this is not what I want. I don't personally want any of the negativity that could be destructive towards me or my loved ones in my space. I have some very protective spirits in my space and some deities that I work with that are very protective and very defensive over those who would want to wish me harm, if that makes any sense. But they're not in actual fact evil. It's almost like you could see it as a um, incredibly protective mother or like the bear that yeah. you think of. Do you still live in that house? 
Do you still live in that house? That Fortunately that? not. I will. No. Oh, oh. I am so thankful I don't live there. Generally, that place is giving me PTSD. <laughs> do you, so you do you still live around it? You still kind of un- know what's going on in that house? No. I don't want to be around that place anymore. Good. Okay. It was it was pure evil. Um, genuinely. Why don't I've you never think... Come across something uh, like that. You don't think it's possible for those spirits to be drove out of there? I have tried for years. Um, I have managed to get rid of them. Um, but I have um, the things that were happening, such as paranormal activity. I remember once laying down. And I, so it was, a, I'll just quickly describe the situation. Me and my, um, me and my partner were, were in the flat apartment. Um, he told me that he's going to wake me up in a while because I was really exhausted. and I just wanted to have a quick nap. And um, at one point I'm hearing the doors open in a bedroom. And I said, I said, Tom, so that's my, my fiance's name, Tom, I'm, I'm not ready yet. Can you wake me up a little bit later? But I haven't heard anything. And I know for a fact the door was opening and I know I wasn't asleep yet. And then I started hearing footsteps closer and closer into here. And I said, no, seriously, I'm, I'm not ready yet. And then I'm starting to feel the mattress being weighed down. And I said, Tom, seriously. And I started hearing breathing. Now I'm generally quite, I would say quite psychic. I can hear a lot of things, but this felt different this felt like it was a lot realer than the normal messages that I get or the feelings I get so I'm hearing that breathing and in that moment I hear footsteps coming from the living room which to me was again really strange so I turned around I clenched my fist and I punched whatever was next to me just as a like a reflex thing because for a split second I thought maybe somebody broke and broke into into you know into the apartment or something like that and in that moment, when I recognized there was actually nothing there, despite knowing because my eyes were open as I was laying on that side, on, like facing the wall, I know there was something next to me. And I have turned and I and then I shouted for, for Tom. And as I got out, Tom said to me, my love, I heard you come out of the bedroom. I, I heard the doors open. I thought you were already awake. And that was the moment where you both have been hearing the same things. Oh, wow. It was like a step too far. We've both been hearing this and we've both, our neighbors have been hearing footsteps coming upstairs when me and Tom weren't at home. The birds, I I think you've seen in some of my videos that I've got a pet jackdaw. Um, He was incredibly panicked in this, in this apartment. What, what, uh, you talking about a bird? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Onyx. I don't know. I think you've seen him in some of my videos. So he's a pet jackdaw rescued quite a few years ago and he was very panicked in that place he would very often he said something randomly or flap his wings or just very distinctively look at something so there was definitely always something there but um it went to the point that me and tom started having very severe migraines we started looking incredibly sick um our skin like our generally our skin almost looked gray looked gray Ooh. Um, my mom has, my mom has said to me once that when she saw me living, um, in that apartment, she generally thought I was really, really sick. She went to the extent of saying to me that I looked like someone that was having, for example, treatment for something as serious as cancer. Oh, man. Um, and, um, and then all of a sudden it start the argument started develop, developing in this flat end. Actually, my partner started becoming himself, unlike himself with anger, very unlike himself. Um, and something was telling me this was not him because I just knew he's, he's got a heart of gold. That is, it's not in him to be an angry person whatsoever. So I started going to many people who are very advanced in cleansing. I've personally been practicing this for approximately 10 years. So I knew how to cleanse a house properly and I've been cleansing um, people's houses professionally of bad entities and everything. And um, it has always worked, but never here. I've been using absolutely everything, going to help, going to help with people who would um, ask the angels to help and cleanse this, cleanse this space. It would always come back, even if it was quiet for um, a few days, it would always come back and it would always seem to get stronger. 
Wow. And there was a point where me and Tom had been saying, right, we need to get out of this, get out of this flat. We really need to move out. Every single time when we would say this, something would happen, like his car would break down, financial issues would be coming up. Um, and then one thing when we are very serious, when we are talking about this in, in the apartment, the only one place that didn't seem as haunted and didn't seem to have such distinctively, distinctively negative energy was our kitchen. However, we have found out that the kitchen has been built on afterwards. What's that? So it was like a new build that was built on top of that, the kitchen that we had. Oh, gotcha. Okay. And that was the only and that was the only place that didn't feel quite as negative as the rest. And this was our favorite place to sit in. It oh. had like a quite a big window. You said and afterwards. I've been proce- processing one of the words you said the whole time. Oh I, yeah. I thought you oh, said yeah, built yeah, yeah. on so Auschwitz or something. I was like, what is that? And then oh, you said no, no, afterwards. afterwards. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, it has been built on afterwards. I'm an so idiot. um we liked being there. No, 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 not at all. <laughs> And I remember we were once talking that we said, no, we really need to look for something new because we can't, there is definitely something in here. And whenever we were abroad, for example, let's say in Poland for a week, we never had issues. Never. Arguments weren't there. None of this would happen. And in that apartment, it would just be coming out of the blue. And it's almost like it was affecting Tom more in some way, but it was affecting me in a way that I was having very severe migraines and I was feeling consistently sick and I was consistently getting sick. It's like my body was just getting weaker and weaker nonstop. What? So that's crazy. That's mm-hmm. crazy. So you decided yeah. you had to get out of there. We decided we had to get out of there, but there were a few things we needed to do first. Um, we tried a few final cleanses. Eventually, when we decided we need to go out of there, we have, physically had someone go for our paperwork when we were in the kitchen we had the paper rustling and there was no winds there were no windows open nothing like that and it was very distinctive sound of going for paperwork for one of the folders like fairly quickly um so we decided we wouldn't be talking about any of this in the apartment we would be going outside to talk about certain things and it worked to some extent and eventually I reached out for help to um, one of one of very, very good practitioners because I said, actually, I feel like I'm at this point that I need to physically trap this spirit in a jar because I can't get rid of it, which was a very big ritual that I have done where my partner has joined in and where we also called in on a paranormal investigation to check what the apartment was like now if i tell you every single thing was going off such as all the monitors um the spirit box has been addressing us directly by name um replying that there's two spirits um it was crazy but the plan of it was to in some sense aggravate this aggravate this, the entities that were in in the apartment to have the energy and then for a ritual to trap the the, the two entities in a jar. Um, After that, everything was cleansed, including using holy water as well. I personally do like using holy water in in my work when I really strongly need to. And once this was done, once the whole was done, the apartment for the first time had an echo to it. It never echoed. It felt empty it never ever echoed it felt dense and it wow. was clear wow that because that actually makes kind of sense in like the spiritual world that you could hear an echo that that because the 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 spiritual world is is noisy man when you allow it to be that's crazy i, I got a question that keeps yeah. ringing through my head right now uh, i got two yeah. que- i got two questions my first one is the one that of i've been course. thinking of for like the last 10 minutes but what what do you hope to achieve whenever you whenever you practice witchcraft? What are you hoping to like? Because, like for example, whenever whenever I pray to God, and when I'm doing my practice, right? I pray to God. I read the Bible. Um, I do things that the Bible tells me to do. I hope mm-hmm. to I hope to glorify God through that. That's what my hope is. Mm-hmm. My achieve. But my goal that I'm trying to achieve is to glorify God through my actions, through by my, me practicing my religion, and to show people how good He is, right? 
So mm-hmm. with, with, with having that in mind, what, what is your goal? What are you trying to achieve by practicing witchcraft? That depends on the type of spell work that I do. Um, truly, I believe to help victims, help people heal, okay. help them through their darkest phases and lead them to the better things and brighter things. Um, and when it comes to my baneful work, which is like you would call, I guess, evil work, is to um, stop abusers such as rapists um, to continue um, hurting um, innocent victims. Um, and this is in some ways to what, whatever is within my power to at least make this a little bit of a better place and not give people with really vile and cruel and predatory, um, like those predatory people, any yeah. capacity to hurt those who really, truly don't deserve it. Who but is, it um, has a great element to it. Who's, who is Jesus to you? Jesus is to me a person who has had a lot of powers in him, who in some ways you could think of it. Uh, I know that many Christians would disagree with me on this, but in a way he had his own cult, his own, like you would in witchcraft. He had his followers that would follow him to teach them. He made miracles. But in some ways you could think and you could argue that he practiced witchcraft himself because he made all these miracles happen. The source came from somewhere. The same belief is in witchcraft. The source comes from somewhere and some people can make certain miracles happen with this if their morals are in the right place. Do you think he's the um, son of God? Hmm. Don't worry, we're not setting you up. God in general. <laughs> it, no, no, no. I just think I just think it depends who you see as God. I don't see God as a male. I don't see God in a way that Christians do. To me, God is almost like the whole universe. It's the everything. But I also think there is many gods. I think there is so many I wanna, things. I want to respond around. to uh, something you said one day because um, I had a guy one time that I was talking to. He was like this old country redneck guy. He's a truck driver, and I was used to manage oil, uh, new production oil field locations. And this guy told yeah. me, and it made me so mad, this guy told me, he said that, um, that he would never let a black guy onto his property. He said, ain't no inward. Oh. He said the inward. He said, ain't no inward ever going to step foot on my yard. And then a couple sentences later, sorry, he, but that's disgusting. he said um, how he was a God fearing man and stuff <laughs> like that. And that's where I was like, okay, hold on a second. <laughs> and after he left, I started thinking, I started thinking, I was like, I, I wanted to ask that guy. What color do you think God is? Because I hope he's black. Right. <laughs> and then I when hope I, so too, to be honest. I mean, then, I don't hope. I don't care what he is, but well, it, Jesus was not a white Jesus was not a white that's man. That's what I'm no, saying. I hope not. I hope God's black and I hope whenever you get up there, God says, I don't allow white people on my property. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I started actually thinking about that. I started thinking about that even more. What color is God? And I don't, I think, don't think God has a color. I don't think God is any color or he's all of them or he is colors that doesn't even exist in our own minds. Translucent. The Bible describes him I was as, just about to say. The Bible describes him as bronze, as as bright as bronze. Bright as bronze. So I think that he's all colors melded. Yeah. That's like I think it'd be difficult to describe. And then as far as the male and female, I know the Bible describes them as male, but I think the only ones dumb enough to put people in racial skin tone boxes is us. Mm. And, yeah. um, and like, I don't think God participates in that. It's a learned behavior. If you put two children of different nationalities together, they will play. Yeah. They won't even notice it. Mm-hmm. You know, what's interesting. That's the thing. And that's fine. The children are the closest to the universal source or in some cultures, God, because everything, these things are learned as a child. The child has the strongest connection to 
as you would call maybe the other world, other dimension, magic in general, children see so much more than any adult person will see. Yeah. And if you want to connect to something really beautiful, to, for example, for a source, to magic, you need to be able to see the world with curiosity through the child's eyes. You need to be able to connect to yourself to what is new, which is why I think it's very important to do some of those very childlike things. Go and play in a puddle. Go and touch the leaves. I don't know. Go hug a tree. Are you You'd familiar with the Bible at all? A little bit. A well, little bit. Well, because you, you, brought up a, you brought up a couple concepts that are really close to the Bible. Just like Jesus oh. um, Jesus was... Uh, he was I, he was telling a sermon or something, but a little kid ran up to him and sat on Jesus's lap or something. He said, "Suffer not the little mm -hmm. children." Then said, it, "Unless you become unless you become one of these, uh, like yeah. like one of these, then you'll never inherit the kingdom, kingdom. of God." Like he talked, like oh. yeah, he said that you got to become like little kid, and it's really close to what you're saying there. Oh, well, there you go. Everything's connected. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so we're at 122. We're going to go ahead and do the rounds like I told you um, earlier. And we're going to go ahead and go no uh, around the room and do it. And then, like I said, you'll get the um, last thing. So, Mark, you got anything? Uh, this is totally off subject, but I was thinking about, you know, we were talking about racism. And mm -hmm. uh, do you guys, it was very interesting because you know, there is a school of thought that says um, that was a curse by God. You know, when man got so arrogant that he thought he could deconstruct God or he could rise above God and build the Tower of ba Babel, 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 right? Babel. Yeah, and that's where God divided man by languages, and many people believe that's where that exploded and spread out in the races and the different races yeah. happened from there. And that was a tool that God used um, because of our arrogance. And um, and it's a curse. I don't know. It's just very interesting. So it was really nice talking to you. Thank you for sharing um, um, where you're at. I have a daughter who um, at one time believed uh, many of the tenants um, – that, that you believe in. And, uh, she's since come around, you know, it's funny. I, and, and I'm not saying you have to come around, but it's really interesting. So many of the people that we talk to just so many are ex Catholics. Yeah. I, I was going to ask you, like, what do you think over half that of who oh, we've talked over to? 70%? Yeah. We would have to go through, it would take so much time to figure out how many, but I would say oh, well over half. Yeah. It's just, it's an interesting. Yeah phenomenon that we have no answer to but it is like yeah i was gonna say that um victoria that at the beginning i forgot to say it but almost everyone we talk to that practices witchcraft or maybe they're luciferians or satanists or something they're ex-catholic mm -hmm. and then some people that are christian now but went into witchcraft like indy she's a catholic too and they practice witchcraft in her catholic tradition and then she went full blown witch into a witch coven, and then now she's a Christian again. But there's um, a lot of people that um, grew up in a Catholic background that was like that, oh, it's and it's interesting. There's too many of them for it not to mean something, but what it means, who knows? We don't know. <laughs> who knows? But um, Larry, Victoria, may I ask how old you are? Um, I'm 26. 26. Okay. I. But then. Uh, no, it was just a question of curiosity. I kind of like to have the uh, age group of the people that we're talking with. I'm sorry I've been sitting here. Wait, wait. Uh, I... <laughs> it's a pin clicker. <laughs> I'll do it for you, Larry. We've got to describe to her what that means. Larry, Larry asked every guest that comes on how old they are. In one week, like mm -hmm. eight weeks ago, someone said like 24 or something, and Larry clicked his pin <laughs> with conviction. And so now every, so every um, episode that um, they give, that me a they give you an age, we, we ask who's a pin clicker. And Mark had his pin out in anticipation over there. I didn't want you to think we were making fun of your age or anything. But no, this is something we do every episode. No, don't worry. <laughs> I didn't. I did not think that way. So don't worry. But Larry did not click his pin, for what it's worth. <laughs> so no, I do have a couple of questions for you, though. One of them of is. Course. You uh, describe Jesus as just another person 
basically. Why? Yeah. What do you think his death on the cross was about then? Personally, I think people just crucified him because they were afraid of his power. I think it was people who are against him. I don't think it was so much of a, in some ways, of. Well, let me. Add, I mean, of, take taking mm-hmm. that that explanation. There were several people that were crucified back then. Why, after yeah. two thousand years, are we still talking about that one? I couldn't tell you anybody else other than the, the disciples of who was crucified on and the thief, and obviously. And, and the oh, most yeah, baffling the part of it is he knew he was going to be crucified. Right. He told about he it ahead of time. Told them he was going to be crucified. That's got to be the craziest person in human history. Mm-hmm. Either that well, a lot of- or what? I don't know. You know, I do know. But- or he knew. Or, yeah, we know. We know. Um, I know. Okay. I, I am not a world traveler, so I don't know everything that goes on in other countries. But the little bit that I do know makes it a little bit more understanding for someone such as yourself being in witchcraft from different countries rather than here in the United States. I think mm-hmm. it's a whole lot more prevalent in the European mm-hmm. countries than it is here. Correct? Do you think? I mean, I don't know. I don't know either. Well, if you have a seeped in history, or a history mm-hmm. seeped in witchcraft more so than we are, simply because we're a younger country. Mm. Well, we have Salem and stuff, but yeah, yeah I did. True. I did bring up Salem a couple of weeks ago to somebody, and then someone did bring up that Salem was just a small part of witchcraft that had actually originated. Was that you that was? That was there? me. Okay, it was Larry, and it said that it was actually started in in um and started in you in the UK and stuff like that, and it just seeped well, over here. Witchcraft didn't start in the UK. Witchcraft started in the Mediterranean, where where life started. But that's where the witch trials began. Was in the UK, oh, yes. though, wasn't yeah, it? You're talking about the witch trials because that, that's where it was more prevalent and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know. That was because of a bad batch of rye. I don't know. You guys ever heard that? <laughs> no. I have the, a couple. The rye went bad, I, and it make it made them all trip acid. Like they were, it was a bad batch mm-hmm. of rye, and it it the the fungus made them hallucinogenic, and that it was like a mass hallucinogenic event. So basically, in the mishap of the rye manufacturing, they created magic mushrooms, and everybody went nuts to partake. <laughs> Right. There you go. Have so fun. I was just okay, about we'll to say that somebody took too many magic mushrooms. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um, so that sounded a I little a, bit out of there. I have a buddy that lives in the UK, and he's an atheist, and he told me, that he's like, sorry, buddy, but your religion's dying. Said that a couple weeks ago or something. And I said, yep, God predicted that, you know, um, God, which in the Bible there is a prophecy that one. Um, there will be a great falling away. One that has to happen mm-hmm. before God returns. By the way, Victoria, is a, it's called the great falling away where many will mm-hmm. depart from the faith and then some will be deceived and even if possible, some of the elect is what it says. Well, I find it unique. But everybody can be deceived. Everybody can be deceived. Yeah, it even depends the who is in the power, who is, who is, you know, who is having the voice. And even if you look at politicians, look how so many rules, how unfair they are and in some ways how, in so many countries, how incredibly misogynistic they are. And including the Bible, and I have to say that, including the Bible, if you think about Mary Magdalene, how much of a power she had with Jesus, how respectful he was towards her, but yet there is very little mention about her. And also, it was men who were writing. And so many times, how were men being portrayed? Men can go to schools, men can learn, men can write. Women weren't. So even in the Bible, even from that perspective, it was always the case that man is in power. Mm -hmm. But my question is, if a woman gives life, if a woman births life, even if you think about Mother Nature, why would you say a man is God? If that God is a male? I don't think personally God is male. I think God is either in between or a woman. I'm going to somewhat agree with you. Mm-hmm. 
First off, God made man and woman in his image. Yeah, okay. I don't think and, he's either one either. He's well, just God. Yeah, right? you, but but because of the way the uh, languages are written, yeah, man in the Bible means mankind, um, not so much okay. man in as a uh, um, a sexual definition, if you will. Mm-hmm. But yeah. um, that makes sense. I typically read a um, verse and. Is that all right with you? Yeah, absolutely. You carry on. I'll happily hear that. <laughs> all right. I appreciate it. I, by the way, I do like your accent. Uh, Thank you very much. <laughs> Romans 14, 9. For this very reason, Christ died and returned to life so that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. You then, why do you judge your brother? Or why do you look down on your brother? For we will all stand before God's judgment seat. It is written, as surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow before me and every tongue will confess to God. So then each of us will. I'm sorry? It's quite beautiful, I must say. I'm not following that. She said that it's It's quite quite beautiful. beautiful. Yeah, thank you. He, Sorry, Larry mother, what's my accent? Larry didn't, 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 yeah, Larry actually didn't write that. <laughs> Larry actually yeah, didn't write that. I, I didn't write that. That's Romans 14, <laughs> nine, 9 through 11. Yeah. A guy named Paul wrote that. <laughs> yeah. And it is beautiful. But it does show what what Christ was, who Christ is, and what Christ will be. Mm-hmm. You done? Yeah, I thank you for coming on. Thank you. Victoria. Mm-hmm. I actually, nice no problem. Um, Thank you. As I'm well. gonna I'm gonna keep mine short. Um, but I I wanted to bring this up, and this isn't for me to like slam dunk or anything. This is just popping in my heart, and I need to say it because you um <laughs> you are a um you are a death witch, and you and and you work primarily with the dead. And that Bible verse that Larry yeah. just read said that Jesus is the Lord of both the living and the dead. And so mm-hmm. that statement either has to be true or it's not. That's the only two mm-hmm. options. And I tend to believe that that statement is true. And that's what I tend to believe based off of what I've experienced, my personal experience with Jesus. Mm-hmm. And I'm not, like I said, I thank you. I, I want to thank you for coming on and trusting us. It's been wonderful. Um, thank you as well. Thank, thank you, you for, for trusting time. us. I know, I know, man, that even sometimes whenever, especially with witches and Christians, whenever I say, hey, man, I promise we're not going to beat you up and you come on the show, there's still that little element of, do I need to be defensive here? Because these guys, typically Christians are defensive. So I thank you so much for trusting me and trusting Larry and trusting Mark and everybody in this room. And I hope we didn't... Um, I hope we didn't let you down at all. But not at um, all. Not at all. Maybe you've been very respectful and it was a very it was a very interesting conversation to have and I think on both ends it was very insightful. Yeah, I learned a lot too. And I would like to um I'd like to just say that um Jesus is always there for you to reach out and it's and it's never too late to reach out and you don't ever have to tell me or anybody else that you reached out, but it's it's never too late. But um, it's at one thirty four, and um, you get your final statement as promised, so the floor is yours. Okay, lovely. So um, I was thinking about um, the thing that, about the cast, essentially, that humankind has been separated when it comes to languages. My only thing is, I don't see God as very good, in that sort of sense, because he must be both, in a sense, like nature, because he created both good and bad. The other thing is, as well, um, we have been given, like here, free will. Um, I don't think it is possible to be purely good. Likewise, you are not going to see what is good unless you experience some of the bad. Um, and I also think when we spoke about the fact that um, God is both and that he created an image of man and woman, um, have just as a quick question, have you guys looked what the Baphomet statue looks like, what Baphomet looks like? 
Yep, the goat with like the Baphomet has the is the it's the it's the statute of atheistic Satanism. It's like the goat head with the human body, and he's doing that like hand yeah, symbol with the peace yeah. sign or whatever. Yeah, yeah. after yeah. you said but it, he's both he's male and female. He's got breasts as well. It's both man and male, male and female essentially, which has been just quite interesting that it thinks like that God has has created like an image of man and woman in that sort of sense, like as an image of of, of God. Um, so, yeah, so was my personal thing is, but so I, I said so was Ishtar. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, my thing is on this. I'm not here to um, like. I am not going to um, like reach out in that sort of sense to God personally. I have felt a lot more of a connection and help through um, from my own deities and. Um, I do believe Jesus is obviously real. I do believe truly in that. But I feel so good and so hard. And like everything I do is working so well. And I will always work for the highest good. I definitely could never see myself getting away from witchcraft. I mean, the things I have learned have shaped me into the person that I am today the things I've been taught, the things I've been hearing, the, you know, truthful messages I've been hearing, including though something I wanted to add about, about spirit in general, like humankind can be deceptive. But for me, because I'm quite adept and quite in tune of the messages from a spirit, I don't think even a spirit or the person, like those who have passed away can be deceptive like humans because it is their soul and almost their frequency that you can feel. You can feel from far away whether um, it's good or bad. This is why I trust more in the in those who have passed, so in the dead, and I'll consult the dead to help me rather than the living as an example. And I would just quickly like to say that um, there is a spirit that I've made a connection with, and I know as crazy as I may sound, um, he's wonderful. His name is Arthur. I actually asked him to help me out. I went to the graveyard and I went to the grave that my pendulum has um, has drawn me towards. And it was a graveyard of a male who was Arthur. And he has told me that he used to be an atheist and he, he didn't believe in anything, but he has been stuck on this earth up until he learned certain things because he's, he's stuck here because he's too afraid to see what is coming ahead of him. And the funny thing is, is that we will never know what is truly behind everything. Anything we have learned from the Bible could be a lie. Anything we have learned from other things could be a lie or the truth. And the truth is even the dead is not going to tell you what's going to happen on the other side. I personally think if you have been a good person, if you've learned everything, if you've done in your life what you are supposed to and meant to, I do think the afterlife is going to be very beautiful. I personally don't believe in hell. I I don't believe in that. I definitely feel like hell should be somewhere where um, the truly bad people go. But even then, I don't think it's a case like people make it out to be such a scary thing that you are going to be burning there forever. I mean, the amount of times I've heard people say to me, oh, you're going to be burning in hell for practicing witchcraft. Yeah. Most of the time, I'm a kinder person than they are in my heart, and I yeah, do so much harder know, than they do. I know that's hard. I know that's hard to hear that. Um, and it's not something we do. It's not something that we do here. Um, and the reason why we don't do that is because we know you've heard it before. We know you've heard it, and we just don't feel yeah. like shoving that down people's throat. Mm-hmm. Total accident. I appreciate it. Oh, Mark accidentally hit the sound effects. <laughs> um, but <laughs> it's... it's um, what happens after you die? What happens after I die? Yeah. I'll move to a different astral plane. And if I don't fulfill the tasks that I need to do and help the majority of people that I need to do, I guess in some way similar like Jesus did, and helping people and create miracles, if I don't do what I'm meant to do and what I'm here for, I believe I'll come back to earth and reincarnate again. 
if I do everything that I am supposed to, I definitely do think there is a better place out there for me because I certainly don't want to come back on us. So, yeah. So right. your eternity is based on what you do in an endless loop until you get it right. Absolutely. That's like this is what I believe. Anthony Weiner, the a poem called "The Egg." Seriously, is kind of that. I'm uh, quoting a poem I don't know anything about. No, it's it's kind of the same premise. Okay. The, the idea that we're that <clears throat> we're all waiting to gestate into the Godhead to be born and that we have to go through these experiences over and over and over and over again until we mature. We will. This is how we learn. This is how we learn. And how many, how many times do you see children that are so wise beyond their years? I believe these children have been here before and they needed to learn something or they chose to come back. Yeah. I think there are too many things that cannot be explained in this world. This is what I truly think. And I think there is no point in ever arguing about that. I just truly think do the best you can do. Be the best version of yourself you can be. For real. Okay. We're at one forty two. It's time to time to wrap it up or we'll 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 go for <laughs> no two problem. and a half. Thank but you. Victoria, thank you. thank you for coming on so much. I appreciate it. And I'll talk to you more on TikTok. Lovely. Thank you very much. You have a lovely, lovely rest of your day. You too. And Bye-bye. it was lovely getting to know all of you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye. Likewise. Man, man for for um for saying um for a person that like you you're you're calling a death wish she was pretty or a death witch she's pretty sweet she had a bright i know she, that was voice. that was uh i was expecting her to come out and go hello <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it it was discombobulating yeah i I, yeah. I sit over here and i listened and i'm like oh man i don't Really I'm glad I don't believe in. I don't, I'm glad I don't believe in reincarnation. That sounds stressful, man. Yeah, it's an endless loop on what you can do. Because so I there is no savior. On. There is no savior. You're your own savior. Well, it's not even that. It's like it's like if you make the mistakes, you got to do this all over again. That's like a. That's just. Well, now in Christianity, that is that can be true in a roundabout way. The what do you children mean? Children of Israel <laughs> went around that mountain for forty years yeah. because they couldn't obey and they couldn't. Submit but that was the self. sanctification process here on earth. That's what, what a part of what we all go through. But it's, there are times, when, okay, like Darcia, my wife, she focuses on those things. When she thinks she has done something that that isn't getting her anywhere in there, you know, or she feels like, this is, is happening because I've disobeyed God, and I'm not going around that mountain again. This is the a potential repeat of an old pattern is what is what she's talking about. I'm not going to go around that mountain again because I've already been around that mountain yeah. once. Yeah, right. Yeah, and, and, I, know, and I, she doesn't want to do that. I I hear her say that she doesn't that she relies. I hear one thing: a bitter disappointment in people. She's been let down and yeah. hurt. And, but the problem is she's carrying, maybe it's cause she's so young. She's carrying an awful heavy load on her shoulders. She's taken everything that's been done to her. She's going to reverse that and she's going to put herself out there for everybody else and help them. But I'm, I'm afraid that in the end, she's going to find a vacuum there because she will expend all of that. People stink and they will take it all. And where does she get that back? Where's the love? Where's her community of support? I mean, I didn't, I didn't. Where does she get her fill from? Who fills her up? Um, It certainly can't be the dark entities. No, they They can only fill you temporarily with uh, fake filling. Yeah, exactly. And you know, I, it's something I don't even want, you know, my, it's hard for me. This is a really hard line to walk sometimes, Zach, because the Bible tells us that the way she's going is God calls them prostitutes. You know, he says his people prostituted themselves with this belief system. And it's yeah. difficult. So it's difficult as a Christian to say, not to say, 
<laughs> grab her little yeah. shoulders and say, sweetheart, listen, you know, and to just listen, well, listen with empathy. But, and I know it's, I know it's hard to, here, here's the other thing. Here's the other thing. I'm 56 years old. She's 24 at 24. I believed what I now consider at 56, some wackadoodle things. Yeah. But they made total sense up here because I was pretty darn sure that I had it figured out. We don't have time for kids to mature and grow into believing the truth, though, anymore. No. I don't believe we have time and for that anymore. And that's why Satan's yeah. going after them so young now. And that's why, that's why, like, I know it's, I know it's, um, I know, I know it's hard to talk to these people. I haven't felt that way the way I felt today in a long time. Okay. That was a feeling that was a lot familiar from early first 10, 15, 20 episodes. And I didn't realize how long we had gotten away from that. But um, I guess God thought we all needed a, a break. Um, but I felt a dark entity, not saying she was at all. I think she's a sweetheart. But I felt the way I felt with, with Dan, with Nero, which I love Nero. I love Dan. I love Victoria. But the spirits that come attached with them is something very dark and very cynical. And I felt that again today. And I forgot what that felt like until today. And I know, I know, I know how hard it is to talk to these people and not be like, not to grab them and scream. And she knows about hell. We can't warn her about it. But what we did do was witness a little bit. She had no idea that some of the concepts that she was believing in were from the Bible. Hmm. Like you can have your cake and eat it too. If that makes sense. Like, you can you can believe in what you're believing, and you can get everything what you're getting from believing your falsehood you can in get Christianity. Everything that you're seeking right now in be, the truth, in the truth, yeah. in Christ is available to you. And I and, know I can't prove it. I know yeah, that. But but we keep thinking that that the evil demons, okay, are all black, dark, and and nasty. You know, and and, and uh, mean, Lucifer's and all want to kill beautiful. you, and all that. But here's the thing: they're sly, they're manipulative. Mm -hmm. They tell you exactly what you want to hear. Mm -hmm. They talk in a soft voice. They can't lead you away if it was all axe murders. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But they're going to lead you away with a little bit of light. This is the right way. This yeah. is the right way. That part where she was talking about the room, how for the first time it sounded quiet. Mm. It kind of made me understand because I, I don't see in the spiritual world, but I can feel it. Like I felt that that was a familiar feeling of what I felt with her and I can't articulate it, but it's the same as what I felt with Dan, mm. with Nero. Mm. I get that same feeling with her. I can feel spirit and I know what she means by that when she says that room cleared up and I can't articulate how I know what that means, but I know what she means about that room clearing up. I can, I go into some rooms and they're loud spiritually. And I go into some rooms and they're quiet spiritually where you can feel at peace in some rooms there aren't, there isn't peace in it. I, I think we can take the, that a room and apply it. You know, when she was talking about that, this verse, the series of verses popped in my head. I had to look it up when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man. He walks through dry places, seeking rest, and finds none. Then he says, I'll return to the house from whence I came out. And when he has come, he finds it empty, swept clean. Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits, more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Mm -hmm. um, What's the address on that, Mark? That's um, Matthew twelve forty three to 45. I, I think, you know, what we all have to think about is if you go through processes like that, if you clear things out of your life, you got to replace it with something. Yes. And the Bible says you got to replace it with God. That's what protects those spirits from coming back. You know, and I, I at that point wanted to tell her, hey, you know, we all, 
we totally believe in spirits. The Bible talks about them and all. They plague us. And, you know, Jesus threw out many of them, but he also said, if you don't fill, if you don't fill the house back up with something with me, then they're coming back and they're going to come back worse. And I don't wish that on anybody. I want to say, I want to say this before I leave and then I'll let you say this and we'll close it. Okay. Victoria, if you're listening to this to the end, I asked you a question about where do evil spirits come from? And you said you didn't know. This should be common sense girl. And I'm saying this out of love. Don't invite stuff into your home that you don't know where they're from. It's just, don't do it, okay? Um, and I know you've been practicing witchcraft a long, a, a long time, and you think you got it under control. She's 26. But, a long time doesn't count. But you think you have it under control until you don't, and then it's so far out of control that you're up a creek without a paddle, how we say here in Oklahoma. But I'm saying that out of love. Don't invite things into your home that you don't know where they're from. You need to be able to answer that question before you go inviting things in your home. Okay, what do you say? Well, the way that verse reads, stop and think about it. You know, you got a rent house. Nobody's living in there. Nobody's there to protect it, right? So if if somebody broke in, who's going to know, right? They could break in, literally stay there as long as you don't check on it, right? Right. Well, right. why wouldn't they bring? Why wouldn't they go bring everybody over for a party? Hey, man, I found a place to stay. That's the same way with us. Only what we're talking about is the difference between good and evil, right? Right. And we have to keep the door locked. We have to keep it occupied, and it's not occupied through us. We're the house. We have to have the protection of something living in. All right. And the protection that we have for our soul is God, is Jesus, is the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. And then there's a whole slew of things that keep trying to break into the windows, you know, right. the windows of our mind. That's what the spiritual warfare is all about. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, I think that, I think that'll wrap it up. Do your thing. Jesus loves you. And so do I. Thank you for watching and listening. We are out. Thank you for watching or listening all the way to the end. To be a guest on the show or to get a hold of us, please contact us at info at helpmyunbelief.org. And more importantly, make sure to check out new episodes every Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. Central. 